Okay. Um, having the same motives as the police department, um, a little bit over our history. Um, for 16 years I've been here. Um, we've, we, uh, we've done a lot of rearranging in our operational budgets. You guys have a, a copy of, of my line items, and there's a lot of zeros in there. Um, what we've done there is um, eliminated some of that. A lot of that has gone. When the city couldn't afford raises, we gave them raises out of our operational budget. Um, we hired people out of their budgets. Uh, so we helped with the operation and run it off that. So that's what hired a lot of our personnel or offset some of those costs to do that. Currently, we're running 10 people. Um, that includes my administrative staff plus my, front, my line people. <clears throat> and so a lot of that's been zeroed out. Um, so there's not a lot of operational budget we're talking about. Um, we have, and then with that, we've, what we've done there is by taking that out is we've changed the way we respond. Um, since we have full-time people, um, we call it triage in our calls. Um, if they're a small call or come in as a small call, we only send them the three guys versus paging out all 50 people to come to fight a dumpster fire. And that's the way it used to be when I first started and was for a long time. So we've made some cost savings um, that way, or at least saved on how we respond. And with that, we save fuel, we save wear and tear on our trucks, that kind of thing. But we've always had a problem putting money away for a rainy day for an accident. We have to replace a piece of apparatus. All of our stuff is old. Our stuff is coming to its life as far as a fire truck. And so we've been trying to put money away. Uh, all, of, all my people that have uh, tried to purchase, we get the two or three bids, whether it fits within the law or not. Though we have to go get them, we, we try to do our best shot. And we have put money away a little bit here and there in the last, especially the last four years. We, some of the things that's helped build us out is too is we used to contract, or we still do to contract. That's what I was texting a minute ago. We were sending two guys to the San Michelle's BEMTs on the line. The department makes money on that. They pay for their costs, but that pays for our rental of our equipment out there, that kind of thing. And this one won't pay much because it's basically they're sitting on the line as EMTs. But if we were out there as a suppression or an uh, initial attack crew, um, and we missed out on last week, I believe, about the cost of it. It would pocket us about $34,000. And we usually get two to three of those a year. Um, and we've, we've had to pass on the one last week because we don't have the apparatus to send. Um, the three pieces of apparatus that we have um, are our best pieces of apparatus, even though they're getting about 20 years old. The three that I think I mentioned this before in council meetings um, were 70s versions, they were cost us money, it was eaten up in our maintenance budget, put them back together after every fire. Uh, so we got rid of them. Um, they, were, they were given to us by the Idaho Department of Lands. And for nothing, we stuck some money into them, we got them running. And so we got offset by sending one of our better trucks to make us some money. So we've made a budget cut as far as maintenance by just eliminating the problem child, if you will in those trucks. This year, even though we've gotten rid of them and our fleet's aging, we're, we're hurting in our maintenance budget. So there's no way we can do that. So we're actually stealing from other line items to maintain our budget line. Um, so we're, we're working on, on how we're going to maintain our fleet for the next few months here. Because this is our big, this is our busiest year, our busiest part of the year. And luckily, we've been down. We haven't had that much. <clears throat> we've had to put a few extra dollars in our breathing apparatus. It's getting to age, that kind of thing. And because of its age, um, almost every time we take it out, Chaz, you're fixing two or three. So Chaz is one of our guys that we've um, educated and helped rebuild and repair and that kind of thing for our breathing apparatus. And so we don't have to send it out. I've got two of them on board, and we've done that over the few years. We just went and hired Chad for guiding education, so now we have two 
and can actually work on the breathing apparatus. So that saves us some money. And, you know, I just, we were doing things a little bit different. We've cut what we could, but most of our operation is done on the pair people, add people, which in the long run has actually saved us money because although we're getting more things done that we should be, we're getting more safer a little bit, but we're still, we're still short-handed as far as personnel. And I was going to ask for more personnel, and I was going to ask for more maintenance money. Uh, we're talking radios, we're talking SCPAs, we're talking fuel, all that. I was going to come with you knowing that I wasn't going to get it, but we, you guys need to know that. So it's really hard for me to, you know, look at my budget and go, I'm already screaming line items, so I can't get it anymore. I've got, I'm actually paying, um, stealing from Peter to pay Paul on my own budget to make things work. And so to ask for another 5%, I'm just going to, I'm having a hard time finding anything that's not going to hurt something else long, long term or even this year. Take any questions? What's your operational budget versus your salary budget as a percentage? And how as a is percentage? that? Percentage? It's probably typical. At 80% is probably the same. 85 85% is our. That's on that. The bottom of that spreadsheet. There as well, if I remember right, their operational dollar amount was like around 180, 180,000 and change. I mean, I don't remember the exact number, but that's I don't think it was over 185. Got the budget that you need. What? What's my wish list? list. <laughs> um, I would like to put in a, a, a bigger portion of capital improvements um, to help offset our aging equipment. Um, I would like to give our guys as raises. Foremost, I would like to put some more money into our pay call because we are getting busier and that's one of the things I'm, I'm shuffling right now of how we're going to keep our guys paid. And it's not so much that we're busier as, as call volume wise, but our calls, <clears throat> excuse me, our calls are, seem to be getting longer. Um, so to offset that, and that's not giving them a raise. That's not giving our pay call guys a raise. That's just putting money in the pool so we can actually pay them. And they haven't had a raise in, you remember when the last time we gave our pay call guys a raise? It hasn't been since I've been here for 16 years. We've not given our pay call guys a raise. Um, you know, I'd really like to go and get the pay for the communications here if it happens in two years. And if that never happens in two years, that's just something that we could maybe put towards another truck. Our, our trucks are aging. Um, really, two out of the four engines that we have, they should be out the door right now, just because of their age. And we're not going to get anything out of them if we try to sell them somewhere. I mean, you might get $25,000, $30,000, it really is all you're going to get out of that truck. The aerial that we have is over 30 years old. And I, I, I called one of these dealers that, uh, that sells used equipment. I says, this is what I got. And he said, I'd sell it for scrap. So whenever I get out of scrap now, and it's only got like 1,500 miles on it. So what hurts our trucks is, because we don't work in the most cleanest environments. Um, what our style, what our, our trucks is the stop start, 
the hours sitting there idling at high idles, low idles, that kind of thing. Our brush trucks would take a beating because of just the environment that we work out of. Our, our breathing and our protective clothing, we try, we've got to try to, to change our uh, turnouts out of every seven years, is what manufacturers and NFPA wants us to do. We've been stretching it to 15 on some of our, our uh, turnouts. Um, we have been trying to shuttle out like five to six sets a year if we can. That's what, if you look at our protection line item, that's what that's for, besides our normal uniform stuff. That's, so your normal uniform, that's what that's for. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we just, we just, I feel we've been behind the eight ball for so long that we're still playing play catch up um, with our personnel, with our equipment, and that kind of thing. So, I mean, the major items is giving our guys to pay, pay increases so we can keep them. You can take up here. You know, that, that's a bigger, that's a big cost in itself right there is our pay call guys. Um, we hired 18 this year. Last January we hired 18. We have seven. We, we should do the list this morning. We had seven or eight left out of that 18. And, and because I have two no-shows for their state test, we just lost two more. So what does that do for us? That, that puts a safety, that's a safety issue for us because now we don't have the people responding. And if PA requires on a structure fire 14, we're averaging anywhere from five to seven. It's not safe. Pay calls not coming in. Um, we had to shut down overtime this year because we ran out of overtime money. So why guys, unless it's an absolute emergency, they're not coming in to help overfill some of that overtime, maintain a three man engine. So we're running two energy capital, which isn't safe. Even on the small stuff, it's not safe. So all we're doing, it goes back to Chief was saying, you know, all we're asking for is um, we're not meeting the standards, so if something happens, we're just gonna write more zeros on that check. Okay, thank um, you. Oh, I have a you answered the question, but you left out a key item. Okay. Maybe a not on purpose, probably. Okay. Our challenge is we have so much money, right? Yep. I mean, basically, what you just described to me is even if I took the 170000 that we're going to put into roads, what do you need? Wages and SCBs. Not, not, I need a number. I mean, if you've got to replace two trucks, that they're old. I mean, you've got to start being able to tell me that my budget's got to go from this to this, and I've got to have this much a year in order to. Gonna, you see what I'm saying? I mean, sure, I, sure. I, I get what you're telling me in generics, you're, but where are the specifics? You're okay. So if we buy a truck, and you're going to have to put at least seventy-five thousand dollars away just for apparatus a year. Is that different than the one light item that we had talked about budgeting for? Yeah. If you, I mean, if we're not going. If you want, if I want to start building a capital improvements fund for each item, you're talking seventy-five thousand dollars a year just for a piece of apparatus. You're talking sixty. Right now, you're talking sixty thousand dollars to replace SCBAs on a five-year term. So, so you're looking really close to three hundred thousand for the amount of SCBAs that we have to replace. The bottles, the masks, that kind of thing. That's what we're looking at. That one we, at least we've discussed right. doing that one. Right. But the trucks, the... Right. The turnouts, if we can maintain what I have on the line item, which is, I want to say about 21000 Yep, 21000 If we can keep that money in that line item without having to steal it to pay for something else, I can live with that. But right now... It's got to go up, so, or I've got to add to whatever I've got, like maintenance. Our maintenance budget, um, can you give me that? If, if we're over. <coughs>
13, almost $1,400 over in fuel. Uh, we are in training for over 400, we're over 400 bucks in training. And we've made some reductions in that. We've, had, we've dealt with ISU, we're dealing with fire services training, Boise. They're paying for instructors, they're paying for our books. But we've had some specialty classes that they won't pay for, that we have to have certified for our guys. Um, so that's, that's where the outside costs. It also costs, we, we don't get the same deal for teaching our EMS personnel. That's $1,000 a student. We try to hire them with their EMS or their EMT certification, but they're few, they're, excuse me, they're few and far between what we do. So this year we're looking at $8,000 for our new guys just to teach. That wipes out my training budget. And we still have training that we have to, that we have to put on that the state's not going to cover. So in essence, if I understand you correctly, because so far both the proposed budget and the one that has somewhat been indicated that we would follow already included raises, you're saying at least 150000 more just for the two apparatuses that you feel need to be. So we can buy it in the future year. Yes. Thank you. 